The first BCS standings have been released, and uh, you see Oklahoma right now at number one. But as we talked about before the break, despite uh, a lot of panic when Alabama lost, the Tide is still in the top ten at number eight. And no doubt, with big games remaining against LSU and Auburn, and Mississippi State for that matter, Alabama's BCS standings could continue to rise. Friday, and the bottom line is this, if, if the Tide wins out and gets to 11 and one, goes and wins the SEC championship at 12 and one, you know, I, I just think based on what the SEC has done, based on the way the numbers work, now there are some undefeated teams out there, but it would be hard to keep Alabama out of the national championship. Well, I mean, I would agree with that, Gary. Uh, you know, when you look at it, national champions from 2009, uh, you know, going through the schedule that they did, the difficulty and how it's rated, I think that certainly, you know, if Alabama ro uh, finishes out the regular season undefeated, wins the SEC championship game, you know, how can you keep them out? And, you know, the thing about it is we still don't even know if anybody would go undefeated. Oklahoma's yeah. still got some big games. Oregon does. Auburn and LSU play each other this week. One of them's going down. Michigan State still has some tough games in the Big Ten. So, you know, let, let it all play out. For the thing that's important for Alabama is to take care of its business and make sure it gets to Atlanta. Well, now we're talking uh, about the Tide and the BCS opportunities there and kind of what we've been discussing. A lot of the, the national experts that you listen to, despite Alabama having a loss, still feel like this is the best team in the SEC West. Well, it may be. I, you know, right now, to be honest with you, I don't think it is. You know, uh, you know what Nick Saban said last week about what they've proven, which wasn't very much. Right. But, uh, you know, I, I think certainly LSU and, and, and Auburn are the teams to beat right now in the West. Uh, you know, now as time goes on, as the season progresses, let's see where we are, you know, heading into that LSU game and heading out of that LSU game in a few weeks. Uh, you know, Alabama beats Tennessee, comes back, goes down to Baton Rouge and beats LSU. Then we're talking about a, a team that, that, that might be on track to – you know, compete for another national championship. Again, then you have, have Mississippi State the next week here, which I think is going to be a huge game. It, but, but, but what this gives Alabama is an opportunity to develop as a team. They still have time. They still have, a, you know, what, two weeks before the LSU game. They have, they have a couple weeks off. So, um, you know, I, I think that uh, it's going to be interesting to see how Alabama develops and progresses as a team, you know, to the LSU game. All right, fair enough. Let's get to the phone calls. They're lining up for us, beginning with Tim and Coleman. Tim, welcome into TITV. Hey, Gary Rodney. Hey, buddy. Hey, uh, I just wanted to, you know, touch on, you remember the, you know, the Wildcat that we have? The, uh, I, I'd like to see them change that to the Rogue Elephant. <laughs> and, uh, and also, I'd like to see Trent and, and, uh, and, and Mark in the, same, in the backfield at the same time. All right, Tim, as far as changing the name of it, I don't think it really matters what you call it. Some people call it the wild elephants, and maybe the rogue elephant's not far behind. As far as seeing Ingram and, and Richardson in the backfield at the same time, you know, Ronnie, that's something we talked about preseason. We thought we would see it. Technically, we have. We've seen them on the field at the same time with one kind in a slot. But as far as both of them being in the backfield together, we have not seen that combination. And, and uh, now I'm getting to wonder if we will. Well, again, if you do, I think it would only be on, you know, limited plays because I think the goal is trying to keep both those guys fresh, rest, rest them, so that when they come in, they, they're as fresh as poss they could possibly be. And, you know, Gary, if they're, they're both playing, you know, they're not necessarily going to be getting that, that rest that maybe they're looking for. One thing we know, too, we hear Coach Saban talk about it, the effect that, that others have on your ability to perform. We know that, that Ingram and Richardson haven't gotten terrible overnight. They're still great backs. Offensive line has to block. Quarterback has to make plays in the passing game. You have to do things to loosen up that defense. Something tells me they're going to get it back on track. They're just too talented. All right, let's go to Birmingham and talk with Larry. Larry, welcome into TITV. Hey, gentlemen, enjoy your show. I'm hey, able to watch it, but I uh, wanted to ask you a question regarding there's a number of big-time recruits still out there that a lot of people think they're leaning toward Alabama. My question, basically, is there any surprise or unexpected recruits out there that you might know of that would surprise that would commit to Alabama, and I'll just hang up and listen. Enjoy your show, guys. Thank you, Larry. That's that's a difficult question because most of the time, if they are not expected to sign with Alabama, it, it's hard to get a you know, it's hard for Rodney to kind of get a gauge on uh, them. But yeah, I, he might be talking about a guy like Tony Stewart, maybe linebacker uh, out of the state of Florida. That would certainly be a huge pickup. Again, now he had been leaning towards Clemson and, and Florida State 
probably Florida State, but made that visit up here a few weeks ago for the Florida game, was blown away. And I think that uh, Alabama is certainly in the mix for him. Curtis Grant, a linebacker out of Virginia, who I think uh, Florida has had the inside track. We'll see what happens with him. But, I mean, you know, Alabama is in on a lot of these big guys and uh, – uh, you know, certainly still in the mix for guys like Jadeveon Clowney, though it may be a little bit longer shot than, than what we expected earlier on. So, but we'll, we'll see what happens. All right. From Larry in Birmingham, we'll talk with Joseph in Tuscaloosa. Joseph, welcome into the show. Hey, David, Rodney. How y'all doing today? Hey, my friend. Doing well. Yeah, roll tide, by the way. All right. Go ahead, Joseph. Hey, say, man, I'm, I want to know if I'm, okay, Greg Macro, okay, I know it's a little bit. There's been kind of some self playing on the behalf of the quarterback a little bit because I know he kind of quick to hold the ball instead of passing because I'm wondering, are we going to be if motivated to play Tennessee? I mean, are we going to be motivated with Tennessee? Well, I, think, I think so, Joseph. I mean, you know, Coach Saban has talked about it already this week. It doesn't matter what the record is in a rivalry like this. And don't forget, it wasn't that long ago that Tennessee was dominating the series. Philip Former was wreaking havoc on Alabama, causing problems on and off the field. And even though a lot has changed since that time and Alabama's going for its fourth victory in a row, it doesn't take but one loss to get you back on the other side of things. So I think Alabama will be ready to play in this game. Well, and, and again, sometimes, Gary, what happens is people take when you don't dominate a team like Ole Miss that you're not motivated. And again, you know, I don't think that's necessarily the case. Uh, you know, Alabama may not go up to Knoxville and dominate Tennessee. I think Tennessee's going to be very competitive in this game, but I think Alabama will be motivated to win the game. But again, to answer your question, I think they'll be ready to play. And like Rodney alluded to, I think they were ready to play against Ole Miss. Ole Miss, for whatever reason, with Houston Nutt, has been a tough matchup for Alabama. But you know what? Alabama's won every time they've played Ole Miss under Houston Nutt. Well, more of your phone calls and emails are coming up on the program, so don't touch that dial. As a matter of fact, touch that phone and give us a call. We'll be back right after this. More phone calls in just a moment, but first you'll notice the uh, original elephant wear shirts that Rodney and I are wearing again tonight here on the prog program, courtesy of the locker room located on the University Strip, and they are a Tuscaloosa tradition. Mr. Gatewood and company have been uh, around for 46 years, and they are the home of the original elephant wear. They've got shirts, they've got pullovers, long sleeve, short sleeve pants as well. You can drop by the store and see them, or you can check them out online at www.locker-room.biz. Tell them that Gary Harris and Rodney Orr sent you from TITV. They will help you out and fix you up. Okay, let's go right back to the uh, phone calls now. Gary is standing by in Fayette. Gary, welcome into the show. Thank you. Go ahead, Gary. <laughs> Oh, I'd like to know what the last on Isaiah Kroll and Jadavian Clowney is. Well, Gary, I really don't think we're going to hear anything too significant, to be quite honest with you, on, on either one of those guys until later on in the process. You know, to be quite honest with you, I think Alabama right now is holding the edge for Isaiah Crowell, outstanding running back from Columbus, Carver, Georgia. You know, you can never count out Georgia. They're going to put an all – they already have put an all-out blitz on him. And, you know, he did grow up a Georgia fan, so I think that, you know, Alabama, though – is, is in the lead for Isaiah right now. Do you want to say something on that? Well, I just was going to try to get one more phone call in. We're up against the break. But, CB, real fast, my friend. All right, buddy, what, what's up with our offensive line? Do we just need a break? Are they going backwards? Or what y'all think, man? All right, CB, a couple things on the offensive line. First, I don't think they've played as badly as people are trying to make it out that they've played. Uh, against South Carolina, McElroy had some time. He, he ate the ball a few times. They're putting a lot of people up there for him to block. I still think they're, they're playing pretty well. I think that's a good group. Yeah, and I want to answer the second part of Gary's question about Jadeveon Clowney. I think right now, Gary, that Jadeveon's going to be very difficult to get away from South Carolina. Again, a long way. We'll see what happens. All right, we've got to take a timeout. Sorry to cut you short on the phone calls, but we've got to pay some bills. We'll be back right after this with our predictions. Prediction time. Rodney and I both 6-1. and one. We both said it would be a tough game against Ole Miss. We were right. What do you see on uh, the tide in the balls? Well, to be honest with you, I know, Gary, that a lot of Alabama fans, all the Alabama fans want to see Alabama blow Tennessee out, and they're, they're, they want to see a dominating performance. But I don't think Alabama's up to that right now. I think Tennessee's going to play very well, but I do think Alabama will win 24-13. Well, you know, Rodney, again, we don't discuss our picks in advance, uh, but I, I'm right there with you again. I, I think Tennessee is going to be ready to play. Derek Dooley has a lot of pride and, and wants to show well against Nick Saban. He respects Nick Saban tremendously. The Vols are going to be hyped. 
and they have proven that they can play good football. Look at the LSU game. Should have won that game. Alabama's better. Alabama will get it done, but it'll be a tough one. 23-13. I'm right there with you. I think the Tide uh, wins a fourth quarter game against the Vols. Well, that is going to do it for Tider Insider TV for this week. But uh, don't forget, if you missed any of tonight's show, if you just want to see it again, you can catch it later on the uh, website at WVUATV.com. We'll also replay it tonight here at 1035. It's also time to go to dinner. We are going to be going to the Pottery Grill tonight in Northport. Come by and see us if you will. So for Rodney, our producer John Huddleston, our director Jonathan Newman, and our entire TITV crew, I'm Gary Harris wishing you a good Tuesday evening, and we'll see you back next week. So long, everybody.